Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking you through my three-ish step process for taking notes at medical school. If you're new here, my name's Lydia and I'm a second year medical student in Southampton. On this channel I mainly make vlogs about my time at medical school but occasionally I make videos like this where I give you my top tips for studying and all things like that. So today we are gonna be talking about note taking. So at the start of my first year, I made a video all about how I take notes on my iPad using GoodNotes. Now I'll leave that one below. However, that video was filmed during lockdown. We're talking peak pandemic. Back when I was taking notes every day on GoodNotes, I had a lot more spare time, mainly because we were in a lockdown and I had nothing else to do other than make my notes look really pretty. But unfortunately, I don't really have time to take notes in that way anymore so I have had to update my note taking method to be a bit more efficient considering we are in the lecture theatres a lot more. I'm going to talk you through today how it's changed and what I'm doing currently. I know a lot of med school YouTubers do go by the no note method and honestly that does seem to be the most time efficient way of taking notes and I honestly think if that works for you then brilliant go ahead and do the no note method because I would probably do it too if I could. I'll link down below a few videos videos about not taking notes at med school but I personally do need to take notes and I figured out that that is something I'm just gonna have to deal with. I need to take notes A to make sure I can process the information properly and B to make sure I have something to reference that I have written myself in my own words. I've tried going back and looking at lecture slides after I've not taken notes but you can't really trust that all lecturers are gonna put the right information on the slides that you need. I just trust myself more to summarize the lectures in a way that makes sense for me so when I'm revising I can easily just go back and look at my notes. That brings me on to the first step of my note taking process and that is using my iPad Air. I've got the iPad Air third generation and I absolutely love it and I also have the Apple Pencil first generation I believe. I just think it's brilliant. I use it mainly in real-time lectures so when I'm in the lecture theatre that is when my iPad is most useful to me. My app of choice is still GoodNotes 5. I absolutely love it. I just think my notes always look so nice on it so I'm definitely still a fan of GoodNotes 5. I also think I've done a good job of managing to keep everything organised within GoodNotes and so far I haven't run out of memory so that's always a good thing. So a lot of people asked me on my last note-taking video how much storage I have on this iPad. So I have a 64 gigabyte iPad and and currently I've used 40 gigabytes and that is after having this iPad for nearly two years. But I do think obviously I'm running the risk now of using up all the memory as we go into third year but so far I haven't used up all the memory. But if you are worried about using up memory then maybe opt for the bigger storage. It just wasn't in my budget when I bought the iPad so yeah something to consider. My actual note taking process is really simple. Before the lecture I download the slides from PowerPoint or a PDF depending on what the lecturer has uploaded and then I just airdrop it from my laptop onto the iPad and import it into GoodNotes. I like to have my slide on the six per page kind of setup because then I can fit lots into one page and obviously take up less memory on the iPad. It also means I can see what's coming up next in the lecture and just have a good overview of what to expect. And then basically while the lecture is happening I just sit back and annotate onto the slides if the lecturer has said anything that isn't already on the slide. It just means I can listen a bit more, take in what's being said rather than worrying about my notes and rushing to type them up. Sometimes I will drag and drop images from Google if I feel like it needs extra explanation or an extra diagram on the slide but really I don't add that much it's just little notes here or there there's not much to it you're just scribbling and that is basically the main way I use my iPad I also really love my iPad for anatomy learning now I love to be able to draw out structures myself Obviously you can do that on a piece of paper, so it isn't totally necessary to have an iPad to draw anatomy out in front of you. But for when I'm learning anatomy, I just love to be able to make my own little drawings. So my second step in note taking is using Notion. Now I discovered Notion about six months ago, and at the start I felt like it was quite a lot of effort, but now I've kind of learned how to use it. I absolutely love Notion, and I would totally recommend it to anyone at uni. I think it's brilliant for organizing notes and just having everything Thing in one place. I also would say that when my lectures are pre-recorded or online I just skip the iPad step and type straight up into Notion because you can rewind and pause the lectures so 
I don't need to worry so much about annotating the slides. I can just directly go into Notion and that definitely saves time. So yeah, when I'm not in an in-person lecture, straight into Notion, it's just a lot easier. And that's why I say this is my three-ish step process because sometimes it is just a two-step process. Anyway, I'll give you a quick look at my notes on Notion. This is my medicine homepage on my Notion. If you do want a full Notion tour of everything I've got on Notion, let me know in the comments because I'd be happy to make that video. But today I just want to show you my notes, so we'll keep it simple. So I've organised all of my modules here and this is where I keep all of my lecture notes. So the lecture I did earlier was from our gastrointestinal module, so if I open that up, you can see that I've organised every week because every week had a theme in this module it's not the same for every module at our uni but this module did so i organized them by week and then below you've got all of my lecture notes and i organize those by topic so for example if we go into physiology i really like the way that you can make a contents page so you can literally just click and skip to the lecture notes so you can see that this is how I set up my notes. It's very simple, I don't like to ramble too much, I just like to put the key points down and then include any diagrams. Obviously for things like physiology, there's gonna be more diagrams. And yeah, this is just how my notes go. So if I take you back to the GI homepage, so for example, if I'm typing up the lecture notes for the viral gastroenteritis lecture, then I would start off by doing the title for the lecture, and then I would go in and write down any learning objectives that were given to us. Not every lecturer gives us learning objectives, but when they do, I always make sure to make them the basis of the structure of my notes, mainly because lecturers like to write their exam questions based on the learning objectives. So I do think it's really important that you make sure in your notes you've covered all of the learning objectives given to you in the lecture. I'll write out the learning objectives and then I'll literally just go through and with my notes from the lecture, and I'll just go in under each learning objective and fill it out. And that's literally how I make my notes. I think it helps me not to include too much. I like to keep my notes simple. I don't want too much there because realistically, I'm not gonna go back and read all of it. I'm just gonna use it as a reference when I'm revising. And that's kind of the basis of my note taking. It really isn't that difficult. I'll add diagrams if I feel I need to add diagrams. I also like how with Notion, you can add links to other pages within Notion. So say a topic comes up more than once, you can kind of just link back to another set of notes you've got. I mean, another thing I like about Notion is I just think it looks really aesthetically pleasing. So that brings me on to my final step of note taking, which is using my beloved Anki. If you don't know what Anki is, it's basically an app where you can make your own flashcards and then you can learn them via space repetition. I have been using Anki since the start of first year, I think, or halfway through first year. So I've been using it about a year now and I've definitely noticed a difference in my memory of different topics. So I would absolutely recommend Anki. I've included it in my note-taking video because making the Yankee flashcards is the final step of my note-taking process That's when I say okay, I'm done with that lecture now. I've done everything I need to do So maybe a day or two after the lecture I open up Anki and I make the flashcards for that lecture I go back to my notion and I open it up I look at the learning objectives and I design my questions based on those learning objectives. One big tip I would say is that less is more with Anki. You don't need to make 100 flashcards per lecture because it's just unrealistic to expect that you're gonna be able to get through them all before your exams. Try to figure out what are the main things you need to know from that lecture, what are the most important things, and design your flashcards around that rather than just making a flashcards for each sentence in the lecture. Otherwise, you're just gonna take up so much time. I'd say my most used cards on Anki are the type in the answer ones. I love the image occlusion, especially for anatomy, and also the closed paragraph for testing whether or not you can remember the keywords and stuff. Those are definitely my most used cards. And then, of course, on Anki, you've also got the heat map extension you can download, which will show you how many cards you're doing every day. I really like having that visual reminder of how much I've actually been doing, and it reminds me, especially in exam season, to make sure I keep going with answering my questions every day and making sure I do the cards that are due. And that is the end of my two slash three step note taking process. For revision, obviously I use my Anki flashcards. I've recently got into using Quesmed. I really would recommend Quesmed as a revision tool. And then another way I love to revise is doing mind maps. So I'll go on a lecture, I'll pick it out of my notion, I'll put the title of the lecture in the middle of the page and then I'm just gonna like write out any ideas I have about the lecture 
and then go back through the lecture notes and fill in anything I missed and that kind of helps me figure out what I remember and what I don't. So that is my three-ish step process for taking notes at uni. Probably not the most time efficient but it's the way that works for me and I'm just one of those people that needs to go over things multiple times before it sticks in my brain. So that is how I do it. I do think the most important thing is just trial and error. If a note taking process isn't working for you, just drop it and try something else. Before medicine, I did an entire biology degree and the way I took notes then is completely different to now. So what I would say is it's never too late to change how you take notes and experiment with new methods. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos and vlogs coming up over the next few months. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!